and be able and be able to share some of the information about why old places matter. Um, now, I assume that those of you who have decided to join us this evening care about this topic very much, as I do, why old places actually matter to people. I want to acknowledge the institutions that supported this work for me. It wouldn't have been possible without support of the, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, where, as Fiona said, I work, but also the American Academy in Rome, which gave me a fellowship for six months to live and work in Rome and to work on this research. And you see that old place here. This is the American Academy in Rome building in Rome on the Janiculum Hill, a building designed by McKim, Mead, and White, um, and purpose-built to house the Academy. Me. It overlooks the old city. And my studio was one of the second story uh, windows overlooking all of the ancient city of Rome, a great place to work on this project. Now, um, why old places matter originally was a series of essays published by the National Trust um, through the forum program of the National Trust. And the book was eventually issued by Roman and Littlefield as 75 photos. I hope you'll give it a read, either by going to your independent bookstore or by checking it out from your local library in Somerset County. Or if you would like to purchase it and don't have access to a local bookstore, please go to uh, Amazon and you can buy it there also. I will know that all of the proceeds benefit the National Trust, not me personally. Now, we're really here to talk about why old places matter. Why do old places matter to people? I set out to explore this topic because of my experience teaching historic preservation law, primarily at the University of Maryland, but at other institutions as well. And at the beginning of every class or every course, I would have a class where I talked with my students, and many of these students were graduate students in historic preservation, about why we have historic preservation law. And very quickly, the conversation would turn to why we have historic preservation at all. And I was a bit surprised to find that many of these students didn't really have ready words and phrases to describe why historic preservation mattered, essentially why old places matter to people. So I began to look around and gather the reasons that I heard that old places did matter, that historic preservation mattered. And many of the reasons that people talked about go back to the reasons that are the fundamental points in our statutes and laws. That's about saving our heritage or preserving property values or stabilizing and revitalizing communities. But it was unclear to me exactly what saving our heritage meant. And the other reasons did not seem to get to the very deeply felt feeling that people seem to have for old places when they talked about old places. So I felt like it was important to gather these reasons together to try to build a stronger ethic for historic preservation and give people the words and phrases that they could use to help uh, describe why old places matter, both for themselves and for other people. I want people to think about it for themselves and to come up with their own way of expressing why these places actually mattered to them so much. Now, I ended up writing about 14 reasons, but let me say at the outset that I don't think there are only 14 reasons that old places matter to people. I think there are as many reasons as there are people in place. And the way people express what they care about with regard to these old places varies from place to place and from person to person. But what I hope you will do as I go through this presentation today is for you to think about old places that matter to you and to think about which of these reasons resonate with you, which ones don't, what other reasons you would think about. And then at the end, I hope we'll have some time 
for discussion about why you think old places matter. Now, let's dive in. I'd like to begin with a word that I heard most often as I interviewed people, continuity. Old places give people a sense of continuity. In a world that's constantly changing, old places provide people with a sense of being part of a continuum that is necessary for their psychological and emotional health. Maria Lewicka, an environmental psychologist, says that the majority of authors agree that the development of emotional bonds with places is a prerequisite of psychological balance and good adjustment, and that it helps to overcome identity crises and gives people the sense of stability they need in the ever-changing world. We often see this in the schools and other institutional buildings in our communities where people have gone for generations. And here I use the example on the upper right, the Caldwell Station School in Huntersville, North Carolina, near where I grew up, where my father's family went to elementary school and which continues today as a community preschool, giving people that sense of continuity with, with the uh, community, with the past, the present, and the future. But we perhaps see this sense of continuity most forcefully when that sense of continuity is broken. On the left, you see a place called Palmer Chapel in the Great Smoky Mountains of, of Western North Carolina. When, Smoky, when the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was created, people were forcibly removed from their homes in order to create the national park. And this church building remained in one of the communities. Even three generations later, people still come back to this place to reconnect with the place and with the sense of community that they had there. The place binds them together and gives them that sense of community. We feel this all over the at places all over the world. In the lower right is a place called Matera um, in, in southern Italy. And we toured there when I was living in Italy. And the tour guide we had um, told us that people were forcibly removed from these houses that you see here, ostensibly for healthier housing elsewhere. And yet the tour guide's grandmother said that the community was never the same, that the sense of continuity people had with that place was broken. Old places matter because they give people a sense of continuity. Memory. The architect Mary Danaidi tells her granddaughter, old buildings are like memories you can touch. Memory is an essential part of consciousness. Without memory, we're hardly ourselves. And we see this when we know people who have lost their memories, such as people with Alzheimer's or other diseases, they have lost their memory and their identity is partially erased. And there is, as the geographers Stephen Holscher and Derek Alderman say, an inextricable link between memory and place. People anchor their divergent memories in place. Now, there are two aspects of memory in place, individual memory. And here I use as the example, the Cafe Reggio in New York's Greenwich Village, which I frequented in my 20s and which I still return to when I go back to New York to remind myself not only of the person who I was then, but how I and my identity have changed over time. The, the memory of that place brings back the sense of who I was. But there's also the sense of collective memory. And here I use the example of the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C. When people see this image, they immediately are reminded of the March on Washington, even though that march may have occurred before they were even born and they may not have even been there. That place conjures that collective memory of the March on Washington, as well as other events that have taken place there. There are even ways that memory can be embedded in a place and people may have forgotten what it was about. 
And I use as an example this gate from a cemetery in North Carolina. It's the cemetery at Rama Presbyterian Church in Huntersville, again, my hometown. This is where I will be buried when I die. And you'll notice something funny about that gate. It has no wall around it, and it has no wall around it because my frugal Presbyterian ancestors saw fit to sell the old stone wall to the highway department for highway construction. Yet the continuation of that gate reminds people of the, of the fence that once surrounded the cemetery. Old places are uh, anchor our memories, our mnemonic aids that anchor our memories. Individual identity. Old places embody our identity. People have long recognized the link between place and identity from Cicero, who wrote with meaning about returning to his grandfather's house, to James Marston Fitch, who wrote that preservation affords the opportunity for the citizens to regain a sense of identity with their own origins, of which they have often been robbed by the sheer process of urbanization. Psychologists, sociologists, philosophers, and architectural theorists all study the relationship between place and identity. Most would agree that Place is inextricably linked with the development and maintenance of the continuity of self. Virtually everyone who has studied the issue in a wide variety of fields confirms the links between place and identity. There are even those who say that identity and place are inseparable, that people are always in and out place, that life itself begins and ends with place. Our sense of identity with place is not static, however. It changes over time. Um, and our identities may form links with different places. In the upper left, I show Raymer Presbyterian Church. You've already seen the cemetery gate there, uh, to which my family has long ties. That is part of my identity. And in the lower left is my great-grandfather's simple white farmhouse. Again, a place that's part of my identity. But I've also formed a sense of identity with DuPont Circle, where I lived for 30 years, shown in the center, with the American Academy in Rome, shown in the lower right, uh, where I lived only for a brief time, and with this small cabin in West Virginia, which I've now owned for 20 years, and which is also part of my identity, shown in the upper right. But one of the things that became interesting to me as I looked at identity in place was that places did not have to be particularly old for people to begin to form a sense of identity around them. In the lower center, you see a place called Eastland Mall in Charlotte, North Carolina, the mall of my teenage years where I would go in junior high school. While I was writing this essay on individual identity, I, um, my cousin sent me photographs of Eastland Mall. He works for the local preservation commission because it was proposed to be dem demolished. And to my astonishment, a preservation group had sprung up to try to save Eastland Mall. And they used the same type of language that I was using. That was part of the identity of the, of the Eastern part of Charlotte. That was part of their identity. And in fact, um, I discovered that the demolition contractor hired to demolish the mall had actually set up a memory site on his own website because he had met his wife ice skating in the mall. My conclusion from this, uh, this looking at Eastland Mall and the idea of individual identity is that it takes about a generation for people to feel a sense of identity with place, that essentially places become almost old in only about 30 or 35 years, which happens to coincide with the time when they are most vulnerable to demolition. Old places embody our individual identity. Civic identity. Old places embody our civic, state, national, and universal identity. Independence Hall, shown here, and countless other places embody the history 
and principles of the United States. And the preservation movement has long championed these places. Patriotism and national identity have been drivers of the preservation movement, particularly since the Historic Sites Act of 1935. But I noticed when I talked to people about patriotism and uh, civic identity and and preservation, that people were no longer particularly comfortable talking about patriotism as a reason that old places matter. And I decided that that was really because of something that Edward Said described as the vexed issue of nationalism and national identity, of how memories of the past are often shaped in accordance with a certain notion of what we, or for that matter, they really are. The truth of the matter is that we in the preservation movement have left people out. Enslaved people were barely mentioned for many years at plantation houses. Native Americans were treated as the enemy only at frontier forts. Laborers and workers were not mentioned at the places where they worked, including the mansions that they built and served. And uh, and and many other people have simply not been acknowledged. It is also true that national, that historic places can be used to help prop up a false sense of national identity. I use here in the center photo at the top, a place called the Square Colosseum in Rome, which Mussolini had built intentionally to try to try, tie, try to tie his regime to the ideas of Imperial Rome, to make an express reference to the Colosseum built during Imperial Rome. But here's the thing about old places that is really interesting to me. The continued presence of these old places may foster and form the venue and vortex for our changing sense of civic identity over time. These places may actually help us be able to have these conversations around how our civic identity is changing. I show here in the center the Confederate Memorial from one of the towns near where I grew up, from Cornelius, North Carolina. These places have become lightning rods for our sense of our own national identity. And there's a whole presentation I could do on uh, Confederate monuments and on other memorials. But I'll simply note that these places do present the opportunity to have engaged discussions and to uh, permit the sense of our changed national identity over time. There are also ways that these places embody our universal identity. In the lower left, you see the pyramids. All of us have the sense when we simply see a photo of the pyramids that they are part of our own history and culture. And for those of us who know about the loss of these Buddhas shown on the right at Bamiyan, we all felt a sense of loss when they were destroyed. Similarly, when Notre Dame caught on fire, many of us felt a palpable sense of potential loss, thinking that that great and important and beautiful old place could be lost as a result of the fire. These are places that belong to all of us. Old places are part of our ever-evolving collective identity. Beauty. Old places are beautiful. If you Google beautiful places, you'll come up with a whole lot of natural places, just a smattering of new places, and a whole lot of old places. Beauty and the threat to beautiful places has been the driving force for many early preservation efforts, and beauty remains at the heart of why people care about old places. We all know how much harder it is to save an ugly building than it is to save a, a beautiful building. Yet as I talked to people about beauty as a reason, I found that people were reticent to talk about it. 
And I think that people on preservation commissions and in other public fora are often hesitant to make decisions based on beauty. That's despite the fact that preservation is called aesthetic regulation. We don't often expressly ground our decisions in notions of beauty. This is for many reasons. The subjective nature of beauty, the difficulty of defining it, the loaded cultural aspects of beauty, or the fact that it may simply be considered frivolous or expendable. Yet beauty is still something that delights, moves, and satisfies people. A study by the British Commission on Architecture and the Built Environment found that beauty is a deeply positive experience contributing to happiness and well-being. But here's the really interesting thing that I thought about as I was writing this chapter on beauty. Historic preservation, the work that we do, is the venue where notions of beauty in American society change. Many of us can remember the way Victorian buildings, even in my lifetime, were considered ugly. Art Deco was considered hopelessly commercial. Modern was considered ugly. Mid-century modern was considered unworthy. And even brutalism and postmodernism are now finally being recognized as potentially being beautiful. That is because of the work that we do to draw attention to the significance of this, these places and to recognize them for the beauty that they have. And I will note that somehow age seems to contribute to the beauty. There are also the notions of the sublime that we see in ruins, such as this church from Portugal shown in the lower left. These are places that somehow move us. There are even those who say that uh, beauty can help change the way our brain functions. Old places matter because they are or because they may become beautiful. History and learning. Old places give us an understanding of history that no other documents or uh, materials possibly can. How? Old places allow us to experience uh, full body immersion. We experience history with all of our senses. I show President Lincoln's cottage in Washington, D.C., in the lower left, where people can walk in Lincoln's footsteps and inhabit the spaces he inhabited. People want to go there, and they want to touch the handrail that Lincoln touched when he went upstairs. It gives them a palpable connection to him, an almost visceral sense of place. And in the upper left, I show Emily, Emily Dickinson's house in Amherst, Massachusetts, where people have said that they couldn't understand her poetry until they actually saw her house and experienced her house. Um, I also show a battlefield in the center photograph. Many people have said that they could not understand Civil War battlefields or other battlefields or the battle itself until they went to the place and understood how troops coming over a slight rise may have been slaughtered and others that came up just a little bit farther away were not. They could not understand it until, until they saw the place and experienced it with all of their senses. In the lower right, I show a place called Old Salem in North Carolina. This is a place where I was taken on a field trip um, as, a, as an elementary school student. And I can vividly remember being at Old Salem and having one of the tour guides sing a cappella in a low vaulted room. And I carry that memory with me and as a result, I can remember the history of the Moravians who settled there and their sense of religiosity and their uh, work ethic, as well as the physical aspects of the place itself. And I will note that for many of us, the only thing we remember about our K through 12 history lessons is what we learned on our field trips. And that is because of the way we learn with all of our senses at these places. But there's a little bit more. In the upper right, 
I show one of my favorite historic sites in America, the Quan Tai Temple in Mendocino, California, where I visited with the descendants of the Chinese Americans who built that as a temple in 1854. And the descendant who you see talking in the center photo said to us while we were there, what people learn here by the continued existence of this place is that we, the Chinese Americans, were here in 1854. Old places matter because of history and what we can learn from them about ourselves as well as about history. Architecture. Old places as architecture are part of our cultural inheritance. We love old buildings that are architecturally significant because they're part of the cultural legacy of all humankind and because of how they make us feel. I can remember the feeling I had in, a, in an old house that was architecturally distinguished that one of my father's friends used as a barn. I remember stacking hay in that ruined old house. And even as a young person stacking hay, I knew when I was in that place that it was somehow different. I now know that what I was feeling in those tall old rooms among that distinguished woodwork was a sense of proportion and balance and harmony. I was feeling architecture, architecture with a capital A. In many classical and neoclassical buildings, we feel that sense of, of the emotional impact of balance and harmony, such as at the Pantheon in Rome, shown in the upper right, and at the Farnsworth House, a National Trust historic site, shown on the upper left, we feel how Mies van der Rohe attempted to embed a house as much as possible in nature, and also to embody his theories of form over function. As one of the National Trust architects said about this place, after the Farnsworth House, architecture was never the same. We feel this at other places. In the lower right is a house protected by a preservation easement held by the National Trust called the Fisher Kahn House outside of Philadelphia um, in Montgomery County. And there we can feel how Lou Kahn attempted to embody light and materials in forming a house. But again, there's something more as the Finnish architect Juhani Palazma points out, architecture is also important because it places us on the continuum of time. We experience layered signs and traces of life, and this physical embodiment of time gives us confidence in the future. Authentic historic buildings and settings offer us reliable messages of continuity. Again, just looking at the architecture of the pyramids we feel that very long sense of time. Old places matter because of architecture, which is part of our cultural heritage. Sacredness, <coughs> excuse me. Some old places matter because they're sacred or because they are considered sacred. People all over the world find old places like the Sanctuario de Chimayo, shown here on the left in New Mexico, to be places that move them. They actively seek to experience the feelings I had at that remarkable old place. From the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, the Kaaba at Mecca, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, Santiago de Compostela, to the Shrine of Ise in Japan, Varanasi in India, and, in, and Mount Taylor in New Mexico. Sacred places have been revered for thousands of years by many different cultures. As Bob Yeager from the organization Partners for Sacred Places says, these are places that are viewed as different, as set apart by the community. And there's something awesome in these places, something that lifts you up and takes you out of your normal life. And there are other ways in addition to the religious that places are considered sacred. Sites of conscience are often considered sacred. They've been sanctified by the things that have happened there. Places such as battlefields, shown in the lower right, cemeteries, or a place 
the National Trust has worked to save in Richmond, Virginia, Shaco Bottom, shown as an archaeological site in the upper right. Shaco Bottom was one of the largest slave trading centers in the South. These places have been sanctified by what has happened at them. They are considered sacred. Old places matter because they are considered sacred or because they may be sacred. Ancestry. Old places connect us to our ancestors. Making a connection to our ancestors was once an explicit reason that we sought to save old places. But over the decades, preservationists have seemed to shy away from talking about ancestry and connections to the ancestors as a reason that old places matter. And yet this is despite the fact that uh, genealogy has never been more popular, as witnessed by the popularity of Ancestry.com, where I sign up to pay $20 a month, or programs like Finding Your Roots with Skip Gates. Here is Somerset Plantation in the upper left, which in North Carolina, a state historic site that became one of the first Southern plantation sites to foster a connection between the site and the descendants of the enslaved people who once lived and worked there. As Dorothy Spruill Redford said, the director of the site, people need that. They need tangibility. They need something they can touch, that they can hold, look at, point to. The day I first stepped onto the ground of Somerset, I felt a tangibility more intense than all the documents and records I'd collected. And here in the upper right is Chet Atkins, who wrote of the deep sense of satisfaction he felt being able to visit the Civil War battlefields where his ancestor fought. Being able to connect with places where people's ancestors lived and worked, whether Ellis Island, shown here in the center, or a simple white farmhouse in North Carolina, like my great-grandfather's house, gives people a deep sense of satisfaction, a sense of identity and belonging. Old places matter because they, collect, they connect us to our ancestors. Creativity. Old places spur creativity. People are inspired by old places to compose, write, and do other creative work. In the lower left is RCA Studio A in Nashville, Tennessee, where Dolly Parton wrote Jolene, where Elvis recorded, and where countless other musicians have recorded music. This is a place that was threatened with demolition and was saved by the musician Ben Folds intentionally to try to preserve the capacity to continue that artistic legacy and its specific acoustics and history in that place. In the upper photo and on the right, you see the studio of Daniel Chester French at Chesterwood in Western Massachusetts, another National Trust historic site, where, uh, where we continue to try to promote the continuation of creativity today through sculpture shows, contemporary sculpture th shows, and through residencies. I uh, moderated a program there between a contemporary sculptor, Judith Shea, and a contemporary composer named Eric Nathan, where they talked about the importance of creativity in, in old places in fostering their own sense of creativity. In the lower center, you see uh, a church in Rome called Santa Sabina. Eric, the composer who was part of the panel, was inspired by Santa Sabina, and it is a fourth century church, a very early church in Rome. He was inspired by Santa Sabina to write a work he titled Why Old Places Matter that seeks, seeks to capture the idea of age and place together. It was commissioned by the Boston Symphony and initially performed by them. Why is it the case that old places spur creativity? I'm not entirely sure, but the one study I know of that tries to, uh, tries to study the impact of the age of a building on people found that people's imaginations seem to be spurred more by old places 
than by new places. And the urbanist Richard Florida doesn't say why, but he observed that the, the reality that the creative class is drawn to old places. One of the things he talks about is authenticity, that all, that authenticity is necessary, as in real buildings, real people, and real history is key. The National Trust Preservation Green Lab has done a study that demonstrates the power of older, smaller buildings in spurring startups and other economic and social activity. As the American economy increasingly turns to creative work, it may be an increasingly important reason to keep and reuse old places. Old places spur creativity. Community. Old places help foster community. But how do old places and old buildings and old cities and towns foster community? What particular role do old places play? The writer Wendell Berry says, a community is the mental and spiritual condition of knowing that the place is shared. Old places foster community by giving people a sense of shared identity through landmarks, history, memory, and stories, essentially some of the things we've already talked about. They also have the attributes, these old places, that foster communities, such as distinctive character and walkability, and by serving as shared places where people meet and gather. A great example of how old places foster community is in post offices. And I show a post office in the lower center from La Jolla, California, a place that the National Trust worked to try to save. Old places are, old post offices are often both um, landmarks where people recognize the historic uh, building as part of the identity of the city, but also places where people meet and gather. We all know, if we still walk to a post office, how we can meet people on our way and get a lot of the things done that we need to have done. New urbanists promote placemaking, the design of new places to foster a distinctiveness of place and a sense of community. Developers in new places uh, advertise walkability, design, including front porches and alleys, um, and garages behind the houses, open spaces, and community landmarks. All the things that old places already have. All the things that are designed to get people out of their cars and to walk and to actually uh, engage with each other. I applaud these efforts of the new urbanist and placemakers to build new places that help foster community. But something critically important is missing, and that is age. You cannot build a community. You can only foster the conditions under which communities can thrive. Communities can only form by the interaction of people and place over time. Time is an essential element. If community is shared experience expressed in terms of a common physical place, Old places are crucial. Old places are the places where people, time, and place have intertwined to form community. Old places matter because they foster community. Sustainability. The architect Carl Elefante says, the greenest building is the building that's already built. The reuse of existing buildings results in a large number of sustainability benefits. Land conservation, because the old buildings, the reuse of old buildings doesn't require the use of new vacant land. Habitat preservation, because the reuse of the building doesn't take away natural habitat. Reduced fuel consumption, because the old places are already um, uh, walkable and dense and usually do not use as much car traffic. Reduced fuel consumption, um, avoidance of adverse impacts from the extraction and transportation of new materials, because new materials do not have, have to be taken from mines, forest, 
quarries and other places, and then shipped across the country or the world and used in new building, and because it preserves the existing materials that are already embedded in existing buildings. And the avoidance of landfill material, because the building isn't torn down and thrown away in a landfill, and the existing materials are reused. The Research and Policy Lab of the National Trust has found that it takes 10 to 80 years, 10 to 80 years, for a new building that is 30% more efficient than an existing building to overcome the negative climate impacts related to construction and demolition. Think about the tile floor shown here in the building where I lived in Washington, D.C. That building is 100 years old, over 100 years old, and that tile floor has been used for the entire time. It's been used for three generations. It does not get more sustainable than that. With maintenance, it will continue for hundreds of years more. In addition, there are those who say that uh, it's important to preserve the natural climate adaptability of existing uh, older buildings, such as the clear story windows shown in this storefront in Washington, D.C. in the upper right, or the use of other climate um, uh, uh, friendly activities, such as the closed shutters ch shown on uh, Rama Church. These shutters were closed when a hurricane was coming through expressly to protect the church, exactly as they had always be, been intended to be used. There are even those who say that an old building is part of the ecology of a place and that older communities are their own ecologies that should be nurtured and preserved as a part of their own living community. I don't think the green values of old places or buildings have been fully recognized, but I do think that the reuse of buildings is critically important to a green future that reduces climate impact and that will help reduce global warming. Old places matter because reusing them is environmentally sustainable. The, old, the greenest building is the building that is already built. Economics. Old places matter because they support a sound, sustainable, and vibrant economy. I intentionally saved the topic of, of economics for last, not because it's not important, but because it has been the one area that preservationists have studied and used the most to try to convince decision makers, town councils, and others to save old places. Well, I don't think we should reduce the many powerful qualities of old places to simply an economic calculation. The good news is that dozens of studies have proven that historic preservation, that saving and reusing old places is good for the economy. And the economic reasons are closely related to many of the other reasons that we've already talked about. Here I show on the left the Uline Arena, a rehab project in Washington. The upper center is the American Brewery Building in Baltimore, which was a tax credit project done by the National Trust subsidiary. Um, and Grandview House, shown in the lower right, is at a National Trust historic site. You're seeing it being rehabbed. And the upper right is Savannah, Georgia, a major tourist destination. Here's a quick list of the economic impacts of old places and why economics are a key part of why old places matter. Old places attract tourists. As we saw from all those people traveling to experience history, learning, beauty, or to take pilgrimages to sacred places as illustrated by uh, Savannah. Old places attract talent and investment as Richard Florida observed in his work on the creative class, as we saw in the chapter on creativity. Old places serve as incubators for small businesses, as documented by the Preservation Green Lab reports on the reuse of older buildings. 
old places create jobs and good wages because rehabilitation, illustrated by the buildings here, tends to be more labor intensive than new construction. And because it requires higher skill sets, it tends to pay higher wages and the money stays in the community and circulates in the community more than with new construction. And old places help revitalize neighborhoods and communities. In fact, the old buildings of our communities are often the primary assets that communities have. And if they capitalize on it, as our National Main Street program has done, it can be a key revitalization strategy. Some economists are beginning to try to capture more values in their work, particularly health factors such as walkability or even happiness. Just imagine if these economic studies could capture the full value old places give people, the sense of identity and belonging, the awe of beauty, the creativity and imagination. Their value would be incalculable. Old places matter because they foster a strong and sustainable economy. These old places are all around us. And I bring up these images from Somerset County to help you think about the places in your community that matter and why they may matter. Through this exploration into why old places matter, I've become even more convinced that old places matter deeply to people and to society, and for more reasons than I thought. And I'm a lifelong preservationist who has spent my career in the field. Old places aren't necessary for our psychological and emotional health. They ground us with a sense of belonging. They inspire us in creativity. They draw tourists in a thriving creative economy. They provide a sense of identity and continuity. They soothe us with beauty and sacredness. They help us know who we are. Somerset County is full of old places that matter, from bridges like the Cattail Brook Bridge to theaters like the Brook Theater in Bound Brook, to the Delaware and Raritan Canal, to the Gladstone Station in Gladstone, to Franklin Corners Historic District, to the Middle Bush Village Historic District, to the Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church, to the County Courthouse, to the many other old and historic places in Somerset County, whether they are recognized on the National Register or local registers or not. I bring up this image of the American Brewery Building in Baltimore, because I used it in a presentation at the American Academy in Rome. It is, as I said, a tax credit project in Baltimore that was structured by the National Trust subsidiary, the National Trust Community Investment Corporation. I was astonished after my presentation when one of the other fellows at the Academy, who suffers from a debilitating disease, came up to me and told me a story. She said that when she was a graduate student at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, she lived on the other side of this building. And on her way to classes or to teach, she would intentionally walk by this building while it was being rehabbed, because the rehab of this building gave her, her a sense of hope about her own debilitating disease. I was shocked then when I came back from uh, Rome and riots had broken out in Baltimore and I saw this image show up in the news. Riots had occurred all around the American Brewery Building and although it was not damaged, buildings were damaged nearby. The Reverend Dante L. Hickman from New Shiloh Baptist Church nearby was interviewed in the New York Times and he talked about rebuilding in this neighborhood. And he spoke about creating a workforce development program, health services, life coaching, mortgage lending. He pointed to a field across from the street that the church had acquired to build a youth center and an abandoned laundry nearby that he hoped to convert to more housing. We have a mantra, he said, we restore people as we restore buildings. I think this is why old places 
old buildings matter because they have the power to fulfill deep and fundamental human needs. Thank you all for your attention tonight, and I hope we have some time for questions and answers. And I will take down the screen so that we can hopefully have a conversation.